the river flowing down to the sea. Like a rushing wind you blow into me. Like the falling of the snow, like the blood that makes me whole, is the love of God that flows into me. Like a river you come flooding through the desert of my heart, and like the wind you come rushing, Life through every part, like the snow you're falling on me, with the blood of your own son, and like the sun, you come shining, making darkness run, like a river flowing down to the sea. Like a rushing wind you blow into me, like the falling of the snow, like the blood that makes me whole, is the love of God that flows into me. Like a river you come pouring out your love upon the field, and like the wind you bring harvest down to take your yield. Like the snow you come to winter, touching hearts and making warm, and like the sun you raise the mighty light to calm the storm. Like a river flowing down to the sea, like a rushing wind you blow into me, like the falling of the snow, like the blood that makes me whole, is the love of God that flows into me. Is the love of God that flows into me. Good morning. It is a lovely, calm morning this morning. Um, let me just a minute. I'm going to change the CDs for our closing song. Give the CD reader time to read it. So I hope your Sunday is off to a beautiful start. Um, all righty. So we are continuing our journey through the scriptures. And we are picking up today in 1 Kings chapter 22, verse 10. This is about 853 B.C. And we're going to start with Micaiah prophesying against Ahab. King Ahab of Israel and King Jehoshaphat of Judah, dressed in their royal robes, were sitting on thrones at the threshing floor near the gate of Samaria. All of Ahab's prophets were prophesying there in front of them. One of them, Zedekiah, son of Canaan, made some iron horns and proclaimed, This is what the Lord says. With these horns, you will gore the Arameans to death. All the other prophets agreed. Yes, they said, go up to Ramoth Gilead and be victorious, for the Lord will give you victory. Meanwhile, the messenger who went to get Micaiah said to him, Look, all the prophets are promising victory for the king. Be sure that you agree with them and promise success. But Micaiah replied, as surely as the Lord lives, I will say only what the Lord tells me to say. When Micaiah arrived before the king, Ahab asked him, Micaiah, should we go to war against Ramoth Gilead or not? And Micaiah replied, Go right ahead. The Lord will give the king a glorious victory. But the king replied sharply, How many times must I demand that you speak only the truth when you speak for the Lord? So Micaiah told him, 
In a vision I saw all Israel scattered on the mountains, like sheep without a shepherd. And the Lord said, Their master has been killed. Send them home in peace. Didn't I tell you, the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, he does it every time. He never prophesies anything but bad news for me. Then Micaiah continued, listen to what the Lord says. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne with all the armies of heaven around him, on his right and on his left. And the Lord said, who can entice Ahab to go into battle against Ramoth Gilead so that he can be killed there? There were many suggestions until finally a spirit approached the Lord and said, I can do it. How will you do this? The Lord asked. And the spirit replied, I will go out and inspire all Ahab's prophets to speak lies. You will succeed, said the Lord. Go ahead and do it. So you see, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouths of your prophets, for the Lord has determined disaster for you. The Zedekiah, son of Kenaniel, walked up to Micaiah and slapped him across the face. When did the Spirit of the Lord leave me to speak to you, he demanded. And Micaiah replied, You will find out soon enough when you find yourself hiding in some secret room. King Ahab of Israel then ordered, Arrest Micaiah and take him back to Ammon, the governor of the city, and to my son Joash. Give them this order from the king. Put this man in prison and feed him nothing but bread and water until I return safely from the battle. But Micaiah replied, If you return safely, the Lord has not spoken through me. Then he added to those standing around, Take note of what I have said. And again in Second Chronicles 18, beginning in verse 9, King Ahab of Israel and King Jehoshaphat of Judah, dressed in their royal robes, were sitting on thrones at the threshing floor near the gate of Samaria. All of Ahab's prophets were prophesying there in front of them. One of them, Zedekiah, son of Canaan, made some iron horns and proclaimed, This is what the Lord says. With these horns you will gore the Arameans to death. All the other prophets agreed. Yes, they said. Go up to Ramoth Gilead and be victorious. The Lord will give you a glorious victory. Meanwhile, the messenger who went to get Micaiah said to him, Look, all the prophets are promising victory for the king. Be sure that you agree with them and promise success. But Micaiah replied, As surely as the Lord lives, I will only say what my God tells me to say. When Micaiah arrived before the king, Ahab asked him, Micaiah, should we go to war against Ramoth Gilead or not? And Micaiah replied, Go right ahead. It will be a glorious victory. But the king replied sharply, how many times must I demand that you speak only the truth when you speak for the Lord? So Micaiah told him, In a vision I saw all Israel scattered on the mountains, like sheep without a shepherd. And the Lord said, Their master has been killed. Send them home in peace. Didn't I tell you, the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, He does it every time. He never prophesies anything but bad news for me. Then Micaiah continued, Listen to what the Lord says. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne with all the armies of heaven on his right and on his left. And the Lord said, Who can entice King Ahab of Israel to go into battle against Ramoth Gilead so that he can be killed there? There were many suggestions until finally a spirit approached the Lord and said, I can do it. How will you do this? The Lord asked. And the spirit replied, I will go out and inspire all Ahab's prophets to speak lies. You will succeed, said the Lord. Go ahead and do it. So, so you see, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouths of your prophets, for the Lord has determined disaster for you. Then Zedekiah, son of Kedad, walked up to Micaiah and slapped him across the face. When did the spirit of the Lord leave me to speak to you, he demanded. And Micaiah replied, you will find out soon enough when you find yourself hiding in some secret room. King Ahab of Israel then ordered, Arrest Micaiah and take him back to Ammon, the governor of the city, and to my son Joash. Give them this order from the king. Put this man in prison and feed him nothing but bread and water until I return safely from the battle. But Micaiah replied, If you reply to return safely, the Lord has not spoken through me. Then he added to those standing around, 
take note of what I have said. The death of Ahab. Shocker, right? <laughs> Beginning in 1 Kings 22, verse 29. And again, this is about 853 B.C. So the king of Israel and King Jehoshaphat of Judah led their armies against Ramoth Gilead. Now King Ahab said to Jehoshaphat, As we go into battle, I will disguise myself so no one will recognize me, but you wear your royal robes. So Ahab disguised himself, and they went into battle. Now the king of Aram had issued these orders to his 32 charioteers. Attack only the king of Israel. So when the Aramean charioteers saw Jehoshaphat in his royal robes, they went after him. There's the king of Israel, they shouted. But when Jehoshaphat cried out, the charioteers realized he was not the king of Israel, and they stopped chasing him. An Aramean soldier, however, randomly shot an arrow at the Israelite troops, and the arrow hit the king of Israel between the joints of his armor. Get me out of here! Ahab groaned to the driver of his chariot. I've been badly wounded. The battle raged all that day, and Ahab was propped up in his chariot facing the Arameans. The blood from his wound ran down to the floor of his chariot, and as the evening arrived, he died. Again in Second Chronicles 18, beginning in verse 28. So the king of Israel and king Jehoshaphat of Judah led their armies against Ramoth Gilead. Now king Ahab said to Jehoshaphat, as we go into battle, I will disguise myself so no one will recognize me. But you wear your royal robes. So Ahab disguised himself and then went into battle. Now the king of Aram had issued these orders to his charioteers. Attack only the king of Israel. So when the Aramean charioteers saw Jehoshaphat in his royal robes, they went after him. There's the king of Israel, they shouted. But Jehoshaphat cried out to the Lord to save him. And God helped him by turning the attack away from him. As soon as the charioteers realized he was not the king of Israel, they stopped chasing him. An Aramean soldier, however, randomly shot an arrow at the Israelite troops, and the arrow hit the king of Israel between the joints of his armor. Get me out of here, Ahab groaned to the driver of his chariot. I have been badly wounded. The battle raged all that day. And Ahab propped himself up in his chariot, facing the Arameans until evening. Then, just as the sun was setting, he died. And then 1 Kings 22, beginning in 30, verse 36. Just as the sun was setting, the cry ran through his troops. It's all over. Return home. So the king died. And his body was taken to Samaria and buried there. Then his chariot was washed beside the pool of Samaria, where the prostitutes bathed. And dogs came and licked the king's blood, just as the Lord had promised. The rest of the events in Ahab's reign and the story of the ivory palace and the cities he built are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Israel. When Ahab died, he was buried among his ancestors. Then his son Ahaziah became the next king. Ahaziah rules in Israel, beginning in 1 Kings 22, verse 51, and again this is 853 B.C. Ahaziah, son of Ahab, began to rule over Israel in the 17th year of King Jehoshaphat's reign in Judah. He reigned in Samaria two years, but he did what was evil in the Lord's sight, following the example of his father and mother, and the example of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, who had led Israel into the sin of idolatry. He served Baal and worshipped him, arousing the anger of the Lord, the God of Israel, just as his father had done. Jehoshaphat appoints judges, beginning in Second Chronicles chapter 19, verse 1. When King Jehoshaphat of Judah arrived safely home to Jerusalem, Jehu, son of Hanani, the seer, went out to meet him. Why should you help the wicked and love those who hate the Lord, he asked the king. What you have done has brought the Lord's anger against you. There is some good in you, however, for you have removed the Asherah poles throughout the land, and you have committed yourself to seeking God. So Jehoshaphat lived in Jerusalem. 
But he went out among the people traveling from Beersheba to the hill country of Ephraim, encouraging the people to return to the Lord, the God of their ancestors. He appointed judges throughout the nation in all the fortified cities, and he gave them these instructions. Always think carefully before pronouncing judgment. Remember that you do not judge to please people, but to please the Lord. He will be with you when you render the verdict in each case that comes before you. Fear the Lord and judge with care. For the Lord our God does not tolerate perverted justice, partiality, or the taking of bribes. Jehoshaphat appointed some of the Levites and priests and clan leaders in Israel to serve as judges in Jerusalem for cases concerning both the law of the Lord and civil disputes. These were his instructions to them. You must always act in the fear of the Lord, with integrity and with undivided hearts. Whenever a case comes to you from fellow citizens in an outlying town, whether a murder case or some other violation of God's instructions, commands, laws, or regulations, you must warn them not to sin against the Lord, so that his anger will not come against you and them. Do this, and you will not be guilty. Amaria, the high priest, will have final say in all cases concerning the Lord. Zebediah, son of Ishmael, a leader from the tribe of Judah, will have final say in all civil cases. The Levites will assist you in making sure that justice is served. Take courage as you fulfill your duties, and may the Lord be with those who do what is right. War with Moab, Ammon, and Edom beginning in 2 Chronicles 20, verse 1. After this, the armies of the Moabites, Ammonites, and some of the Meunites declared war on Jehoshaphat. Messengers came and told Jehoshaphat, A vast army from Edom is marching against you from beyond the Dead Sea. They are already at Hazanon, Hazazon Tamar. This was another name for En Gedi. Jehoshaphat was alarmed by this news and sought the Lord for guidance. He also gave orders that everyone throughout Judah should observe a fast. So people from all the towns of Judah came to Jerusalem to seek the Lord. Jehoshaphat stood before the people of Judah and Jerusalem in front of the new courtyard at the temple of the Lord. He prayed, O Lord, God of our ancestors, you alone are the God who is in heaven. You are ruler of all the kingdoms of the earth. You are powerful and mighty. No one can stand against you. O oh, our God, did you not drive out those who lived in this land when your people arrived? And did you not give this land forever to the descendants of your friend Abraham? Your people settled here and built this temple for you. They said, whenever we are faced with a calamity such as war, disease, or famine, we will come to stand in your presence before this temple where your name is honored. We can cry out to you to save us, and you will hear us and rescue us. And now see what the armies of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir are doing. You would not let our ancestors invade those nations when Israel left Egypt, so they went around them and did not destroy them. Now see how they reward us, for they have come to throw us out of your land, which you gave us as an inheritance. Oh, our God, won't you stop them? We are powerless against this mighty army that is about to attack us. We do not know what to do, but we are looking to you for help. And as all the men of Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, wives, and children, the Spirit of the Lord came upon one of the men standing there. His name, his name was Jehaziel, son of Zechariah, son of Benaiah, son of Jeel, son of Metaniah, a Levite who was a descendant of Asaph. He said, Listen, King Jehoshaphat. Listen, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem. This is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid. Don't be discouraged by this mighty army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, march out against them. You will find them coming up through the ascent of Ziz at the end of the valley that opens into the wilderness of Jeruel but you will not even need to fight. Take your positions, then stand still and watch the Lord's victory. He is with you. O people of Jews, Judah and Jerusalem, do not be afraid or discouraged. Go out there tomorrow, 
for the Lord is with you. Then King Jehoshaphat bowed down with his face to the ground. And all the people of Judah and Jerusalem did the same, worshiping the Lord. Then the Levites from the clans of Kohath and Korah stood to praise the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud shout. Early the next morning, the army of Judah went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. On the way, Jehoshaphat stopped and said, Listen to me, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you will be able to stand firm. Believe in his prophets, and you will succeed. After consulting the leaders of the people, the king appointed singers to walk ahead of the army, singing to the Lord and praising him for his holy splendor. This is what they sang. Give thanks to the Lord. His faithful love endures forever. At the moment they begin to sing and give praise, the Lord caused the armies of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir to start fighting among themselves. The armies of Moab and Ammon turned against their allies from Mount Seir and killed every one of them. After they had finished off the army of Seir, they turned on each other. So when the army of Judah arrived at the lookout point in the wilderness, there were dead bodies lying on the ground as far as the eye could see. Not a single one of the enemy had escaped. King Jehoshaphat and his men went out to gather the plunder. They found vast amounts of equipment, clothing, and other valuables, more than they could carry. There was so much plunder that it took them three days just to collect it all. On the fourth day, they gathered in the Valley of Blessing, which got its name that day because the people praised and thanked the Lord there. It is still called the Valley of Blessing today. Then they returned to Jerusalem with Jehoshaphat leading them, full of joy that the Lord had given them victory over their enemies. They marched into Jerusalem with the music of harps, lyres, and trumpets, and proceeded to the temple of the Lord. When the surrounding kingdoms heard that the Lord himself had fought against the enemies of Israel, the fear of God came over them. So Jehoshaphat's kingdom was at peace, for his God had given him rest on every side. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Uh, our, our closing song this morning is Until That Final Day. May we trust in them, the Lord in our lives. Notice how much they went to God about everything. I need to learn to do that better. I don't know this song. Let's learn it together. Jesus, come what may, for Jesus Christ will be my strength until that final day, until that final day. Christ, my banner, I will raise for the world to see. He is worthy of my praise. My life, my bended knee, flesh and blood this world may kill, still I will obey, for not my own but Lord thy will, this life my truth my way, my life my truth my way. Body's cold and dead lies within the grave. My life will be hidden in cleansed by the blood he gave. I will glory in the cross, I glory in my King forever. Jesus Christ, my King, 
of Jesus Christ, my King. Once they got going, it's kind of a familiar tune, wasn't it? Good morning, Mary Nail. Good morning, Randall. Good morning, Jim and Peggy. Good morning, Patty. Good morning, Shirley. Hope everybody has a great day. I'll see y'all back at 11 for Worship and Communion for those who are local. Look forward to seeing you at Miller's Chapel. And for those who aren't or can't come this morning, look forward to seeing you online. See you at 11.